fence installation. I don't know if we'll install this project ourselves or hire someone to do it. Which do you recommend? Uh, luckily for you, you have some options. Um, Red Brands developed a program called Certified Fence Installer. Uh, basically, they partnered with fence contractors across the nation to help consumers find a contractor that will do that project for them. Uh, to find a contractor, just log on to redbrand.com. All you have to do is enter your zip code and a list of contractors will show up. Uh, these are professional fence installers that they can surely get your job done for you. Uh, the next thing is Red Brands developed over an hour worth of installation videos. Uh, these videos consist of things like proper bracing, how to set line posts, how to install barbed wire, how to install field fence, how to install horse fence. So those are all available for you at redbrand.com as well. So you can learn everything about the installation process. So if we decide to install this fence ourselves, how do we know when the fence is tight enough? That's probably one of the biggest mistakes. Fence, when, you, when, you inst when homeowners install their fence, they, they overstretch it. I, you, you probably heard banjo tight, or they hook their tractor up to it and pull it as tight as they possibly can. It's not a good idea. This fence is built with crimps, and these crimps are meant to contract and elongate depending on weather changes. Uh, metals do that. They, you know, they, they conform to the weather patterns a little bit. And so um, what, we what we recommend is just point out half of that crimp, not the entire crimp. Um, the other thing you can do is you can look at Red Brand's website. They actually show how to stretch field fence. Um, so you'll get a better idea of just how tight you need to have it. It's not banjo tight. It's, you know, it's just meant to pull out half of that cramp. I know when they post for our project, can you tell me how far apart to space them? Sure. Uh, that'll depend on a couple things. Uh, animal pressure and then product type. But a typical rule of thumb is anywhere from 8 to 12 feet. Um, I would recommend if you're using T-posts that after every fourth T-post you put a wood post in. Uh, just to add stability back into the system. And when stapling onto a wood post, uh, do not drive the staple all the way into the post. It'll, it'll, it'll allow, you, you want to allow that wire to move within the system, so you want to leave a gap between the staple and the wire and the post so on impact uh, that wire can, can move back and forth and not cause damage. The actual fence cost is only a third of the overall budget for a fence project. You have labor costs, you have post costs, you have gate costs, you have other things that make up the entire budget.